One of the icons of evolution that I wrote about uh, is the four-winged fruit fly. Now, fruit flies normally have two wings, and behind those wings are a pair of what are called balancers that vibrate, oscillate rapidly in flight to stabilize the fly's flight. But if you combine three mutations very carefully in a fruit fly embryo, you can produce a fruit fly with four normal-looking wings, two pairs. Ed Lewis did this uh, and won the Nobel Prize for it, deservedly, because it, it showed us a lot about the developmental genetics of fruit flies. In terms of evolution, however, it shows us nothing, because the second pair of wings has no muscles. It's dead. It's like having a small plane with an extra pair of wings hanging off the tail, trying to take off from a runway. And so the four-winged fruit fly is actually a cripple. And it turns out, this is why the, the icon is important, even though it's not as common in textbooks as the other icons. What's interesting is, we have many cases of mutations that produce minor biochemical changes, such as antibiotic resistance and bacteria. But we do not know of a single anatomical mutation that's beneficial to the organism. People have mutated fruit flies every way they can. They've done the same with zebrafish. They've done the same with uh, a roundworm called uh, C. elegans. Uh, they've done the same almost completely now with mice. It's called saturation mutagenesis. There's only three possible outcomes we now know if you mutate an organism and watch it develop from an embryo. There's only three possible outcomes. If you mutate a fruit fly, you either get a normal fruit fly, a defective fruit fly, or a dead fruit fly. That's it. Those are the only three possibilities. You don't create new organs or body plants. You don't even change the species. So mutations are highly overrated as a source of raw materials for evolution. And that's the point of my fruit fly chapter.